Hello everyone and welcome to a game that I just finished and uh, well this is a painful one not just to play and lose but also to watch you, you will truly suffer watching this and you, you will not be able to make heads or tails of what's happiring in this game it is Pregnananda versus Anish Giri Anish just coming off from a tough loss uh, and uh, well he's uh, very much looking forward to striking back with the black pieces but let's see what happens here uh, a Prague with the white pieces opens with pawn to d4 we have knight to f6 by Anish uh, and Bishop to g5 Prague goes for the Trompovsky attack we have pawn to d5 and now uh, usually Bishop captures an f6 or e3 are played but he goes for knight to d2 it's not obscure or anything is the third most popular line uh, just not a lot of players uh, go for this we have pawn to c5 d captures on c5 and pawn to e6 so Prague abandons the center and Anish very happy puts his pawns on light squares and next he's going to capture on c5 he likes his position very much uh pawn to e4 and bishop captures on c5 so you know from experience when someone is playing something like this against you that you you know for a fact that it's not uh, uh objectively maybe the most terrifying thing but you have to be uh, prepared for it and you have to know how to uh how to equalize quickly or you know the player that knows the ins and outs of uh, the the variation will have a huge advantage we have pawn to e5 going after the knight and queen to b6 of course Anish did not blunder a knight here he plays a queen to b6 puts pressure on the f2 pawn e captures on f6 Prague wins a piece and bishop captures an f2 check king to e2 and now just pawn to e5 and if you look at this uh, this really looks like uh you know an unknown player versus Paul Morphy where Morphy will very soon crush uh, uh the the white king here but let's see what happens f captures on g7 attacking Anish's rook rook to g8 and now knight d to f3 just continuing development like nothing is happening here so the black queen can't really go after the pawn uh, still needs to defend the bishop here rook captures on g7 and now uh, we have queen to d2 uh the the amount the amount of poison in this position is just off the chart what do you play here uh you know you might be thinking okay we can't really go after the pawn because there's the bishop here but why why not just pawn to e4 why not let's just remove the defender of the bishop on g5 well if you play pawn to e4 then bishop to e3 all of a sudden attacks the queen here and if e captures on f3 with check king captures on f2 now the queen still attacked and now queen captures on b2 looks great because the white rook is still hanging here but white just laughs in your face and plays knight captures on f3 and white is just completely winning here because if you take the rook then bishop to b5 check and you've blundered your queen so uh many things to consider here and uh, Anish is burning a lot of time uh, trying to calculate all of this so after queen d2 he just develops knight to c6 uh interestingly for this move he didn't really spend that much time maybe a minute he didn't even consider uh you know uh, some other options he knows he has to develop here uh and now pawn to a4 there is a game where bishop to e3 was played uh, Nikita Petrov played it against Maxim Matlakov last year and uh not to, to his um advantage he lost that game it was played in the in the world blitz championship but here we have pawn to a4 by Prague which is the top move recommended by the engine and it is now as of move 12 that we have a completely new game so what's the plan behind pawn to a4 could be pawn to a5 but not really here we have pawn to e4 the move that we said it sort of didn't really work but now with the knight here stop, stop that bishop to b5 nasty idea uh, we have rook to a3 uh, and okay what's the idea here can't we just capture on f3 well let's see what happens here if e captures on f3 then knight captures and okay you have to play something let's say bishop back to c5 attacks the rook rook to b3 let's say attacks the queen queen a6 check rook to b5 now preparing to move the king and uh, threaten some nasty discoveries here let's say bishop to e7 bishop captures knight captures and now king to f2 and uh, you know the game continues but white is the one uh, with uh, the upper hand here let's say queen captures bishop to d3 the rook coming to e1 uh, it is white who is uh, slightly better here so you know just uh you know a normal move to consider but calculating it would uh, exhaust uh, all of your uh, resources so bishop captures on g1 is what Anish goes for now comes knight captures on g1 so you don't have to worry about the knight hanging and now you have to continue with bishop to e6 or bishop to g4 both is fine but here knight to d4 check was played by Anish and now it's Prague who is uh, in a better position we have king to d1 
uh, and queen captures on b2. And it looks like uh, Prague is falling apart, but the fact of the matter is Prague is objectively much better here, and also he's doing much better on time. Prague has 18 and a half minutes here, and Danish already down to 7 minutes. And uh, there are some nice moves you could play here, and uh, bishop to f6 is one of them. Of course, it makes sense to attack this. Uh, point being that if bishop to g4 check, you have to block with rook to f3 as your rook on a3 is hanging. You block with the rook, and once the rook is captured, g captures, attacks the bishop, but yeah, okay, so nothing uh, to it. Knight captures, attacks the queen, bishop captures on b2, takes the black queen, knight captures on d2, takes the white queen, King captures on d2, and now you get the rook out of harm's way, but still it is white who's better. Bishop to b5 check, and white will always have um, a bishop and the knight for a rook with a slightly better position. So instead of this uh, very nice bishop to f6 idea, uh, Prague actually plays rook to g3, the top move recommended by the engine. And we can't really say that Prague is within his preparation. He's already down to 18 minutes, but compared to Anisha 7, uh, this is, uh, I mean, uh, uh, we, we all feel very sorry for Anish here. We have queen to a1 check here, queen to c1. And the best you can hope for is to trade queens here and just play this worse endgame. For example, captures, captures, knight f5 goes after the rook, bishop to f6. Beautiful. Knight captures on g3, even h captures on g3. You, you allow the rook to move, uh, but after bishop to d4, again, the bishop and knight versus the rook uh, will be a better position for white. So after queen to c1, queen captures on an a4, Anil, uh, Anish still trying to hang on here, uh, but now comes a, a true killer move, queen to b2. And of course, none of you are looking at the knight on d4 because you are much too strong for that. Of course, you are looking at bishop to b5 check to win the black queen. So Anish stops that, bishop to d7, and now bishop to f6, and this is just crushing. Rook captures on g3, h captures on g3. With the knight hanging here, uh, knight to f5 was played, uh, getting the knight out of harm's way, or you have to give up the piece, but now rook captures on h7, and he was in this position on move 21 uh, that Anish Giri resigned the game, uh, as there is nothing more to be done here. So truly a tough loss for Anish, second uh, loss in a row in, in uh, day two of the Super Bowl Poland Rapid Tournament, uh, but yeah, you have to resign here. What, what do you play? Rook h8 will be checkmate. Look at this beautiful bishop covering the dark squares. Uh, there's nothing to try. You have one check, but after king c1, that's pretty much it. Even if queen captures on c2, uh, you don't have time to recapture due to checkmate. So your only option here would be to play something like bishop to e6, make room for the king. Uh, but now you might be thinking, okay, we're just going to give up the rook to continue the attack. Nope, bishop to b5 check. Now you part with the queen, and of course now it's going to be checkmate. Bishop d7, rook to e again uh, a very nice checkmate uh, so yeah uh, no idea what uh, Anish ran into could be some leftover candidates preparation that uh, Prague was uh, unable to use in the candidates tournament uh, also could be something you know uh, completely left over from even before, or could be that Prague just found it over the board very quickly. Uh, who knows? These are such amazing players, and uh, yeah, uh, Anish definitely was on the receiving end of this one. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, what a what a miniature! Twenty one moves uh, against Anish Giri. Uh, something you know not not seen every day in in modern chess uh, so you know i definitely enjoyed it hope you did as well uh, i would like to uh, thank michael hildebrand johan hoiby lorenzo tesiore fred ackerman and chess legend for your contribution to my channel thank you a lot i really appreciate it as usual you can check two of my previous videos here thank you all for watching and i will see you soon continuing the coverage of this very nice tournament until it finishes thank you all i will see you soon and have an excellent rest of your day